Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits. Inside this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how to add back contrast and pop to your images in Lightroom. If you've taken a photo and you find that dehaze just isn't doing it for you, it's got some serious contrast issues, some haze, some fog, whatever it is, let's take a look at how to understand and manipulate contrast inside of Lightroom to make your photos pop. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, so let's get started editing together. In front of us, we have this portrait image. It was taken right around sunset when the sun was coming through this window, backlighting our subject. Unfortunately, some of that sun actually came directly into our camera and entered that sensor, causing it to lose a lot of contrast and detail in our image. If you look and zoom in on her hair here, you can see we really don't have much detail going on at all. I need to figure out how I can recover some of that. Now, your first response when you have an image like this might be going into Lightroom and bringing the contrast up. The problem is when that happens, you can see that we really haven't fixed the problem here. We don't have any more contrast, pop, or detail in her hair. While we've added some really weird kind of color cast, and we've kind of just exaggerated what was already bad about the photo. We've got too much contrast down here, way too much contrast kind of going on up here. We've clipped all of our whites, and we really haven't fixed the center of the photo. So maybe we could try our dehaze tool. And this would be kind of the standard way to go about this, right? If you have this issue, dehaze oftentimes will help. And you can see that while it does take away some of the haze in the beginning, as I take that effect up further, it just gets worse and worse, and the colors get very strange, and it looks like we have an alien instead of a person in front of us. So how do we fix this? How do we add pop to our image without making it look really strange and over-edited? Let me show you, and we'll start by kind of dissecting what's going on in this image. Now, the very first thing that I always suggest you do when you get an image that just isn't working properly inside of Lightroom is to take a look at your white balance and your exposure and dial those in. Because oftentimes, the problems you're having, for instance, we've got this really weird red cast to her skin, is going to be a result just of the white balance and the exposure. These are the two biggest things you can do to improve your images is making sure you nail these. And it kind of takes practice to have an eye for what looks natural and what doesn't because your eye tends to naturally naturally compensate um, without you even knowing it. So it will look at the photo and say, that looks right, even when it looks way, way further out. So when we first looked at this image, you probably thought, oh, the white balance doesn't look too far off. But then in reality, when we take our contrast up and our dehaze up, we're kind of exaggerating the color that is already there. And you can see, oh, clearly there's a problem now. So if we go back here and we just take our temperature down a little bit, cool things off, and we take our tint down, Instant improvement, right? We haven't totally fixed the image. There's still a lot going on here that is strange. But compared to before we actually shifted that white balance, it looks a lot more natural already. We've done a great job. So if dehaze isn't working for you in an image, well, that might be your first thing to look at is the contrast, uh, sorry, is the white balance set appropriately. Now, the next thing to do is adjust our exposure here. So I think it's actually still a little bit dark because I'm going to adjust the exposure for her skin. So I'm thinking somewhere around there is more appropriate. So let's take a look at the progress we've made so far. Here's our after and here is before. So already we've started adding some nice contrast to the image. We've also adjusted for that color cast that was there and we are well on our way to making things better. Now the next stage in editing our image is going to be looking at the contrast across this entire photo and just adjusting things as necessary to even things out. So what I mean is if you look at this photo, you'll see one thing that's very strange is that there's different levels of contrast across different parts of the image. So as I increase my dehaze and my contrast to kind of exaggerate this effect, you see that down here in this corner, we have way too much contrast on her skin and this dress and these little potted plants. However, up here around her face, some areas of her face have a normal amount of contrast and her hair still does not have enough. It's gray instead of very dark brown. The same goes with the top of this window where we have almost no contrast whatsoever. In fact, we can't even see the line between the window and the wall at this point of the image. So what we're going to want to do is kind of even out the contrast in this so that we can raise up the contrast on everything and make everything in the image pop a little bit better without looking over edited in certain sections. So what I'm going to do is dial this back down to where it was. And we're going to start with this window here with all of the haze coming through the window. I'm going to grab a radial filter and I'm going to just drag it out here to about the size of the actual kind of rays coming through the window. Somewhere around there is where the rays seem to start falling off. And I'm going to hit the O key on my keyboard to show that mask. Grab our filter and increase the filter just to blend things in a little bit more. Again, we want to line this up as much as we can with the actual flare coming through the window. Next, I'm going to just increase the contrast on here. And we're going to increase maybe a little bit of texture and 
grab our blacks and pull them way down. Not too, too far. Decrease our clarity a little bit because I don't actually need this to be super clear. I just want to balance out the contrast here. And the more I'm messing with this, if I try and bring my clarity up, it's just going to exaggerate things in the image that look kind of weird. So we can pull that back down, keep that dreamlike effect. And you'll see here's, af uh, here's before and here's after. So not super, super um, obvious, but at the same time, clearly around her arm here, we've gone from almost no contrast to a lot more. Okay? So now that we've done that, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it from the other side. So I'm going to duplicate this radial filter, grab it down here, and bring it to this area of contrast that was just too high. And the same thing kind of happened here. We had high contrast here, almost no contrast on the outside here by comparison. So I'm going to do the exact opposite of this current filter. And we can do that just by grabbing our mount slider, taking it down, and take contrast away, a little bit less texture, a little bit less clarity. Perfect, something like that. Maybe just pull the shadows up a little bit. So we haven't made the image pop by doing this, but we have evened out the contrast a little bit more. So again, here's before and here's after. Things are starting to pop. We've still got too much contrast down here in this portion of the image. So what I might do is just copy this radial filter and pull it down over there as well. Maybe dial it back. To do that, hit this little triangle icon at the top of our adjustment layer and then grab the amount and just kind of slide it back so it blends in with the rest of the image. That's looking a lot better. Now the one area of the image that still is lacking contrast and doesn't look very evened out here is her face up here. So here's before, here's after. Her face still does not have, her whole head does not have enough contrast in that area of the image. So we'll grab this brush, another radial filter that is, take our contrast up, increase the whites, uh, maybe not too, too far back the highlights so that we don't blow anything out and increase our shadows. Maybe decrease the blacks a little bit. So we're trying to add contrast while at the same time not smushing this side of her face because really this side of her face has more contrast than the top of her hair. So again we're going to take the feather up on this adjustment brush so that her face is getting less of this effect than her hair. Take the blacks down maybe a little bit and it's just little by little kind of getting things sitting where you like them. Okay, that's looking a lot more even overall to me. So here's before and here's after. Now we can add some overall pop and maybe increase the texture of the image by increasing our dehaze a little bit, increase our contrast, maybe add a little bit of texture. There we go. So we've come, come a pretty long ways from our original photo and managed to add some pop to the image. Now, her face is still too dark compared to the rest of her skin. So I'm going to add another radial filter. Little touch of exposure there. And then I'm going to zoom in here, grab my adjustment brush, and try and add some sharpness to this eye. So you can see that the focus was on her back eye instead of her front eye. So we're going to try. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do with this size of a file. It was taken with a crop camera. So the actual file size is not as large as if I were editing, say, a Canon 1DX file or something like that. You are going to be limited by the size of your RAW file. But we'll use our texture brush, which incidentally I absolutely love. It's amazing what that thing is capable of. Maybe a little bit of sharpness. No, that's not working. A little dehaze. Definitely not. Probably that's about all I'm going to get. Maybe I could lower the blacks and increase the whites a little bit. Try and find a midpoint here. And just as a general rule, if you're trying to figure out how much effect to add to an area of the image, um, I like to take my effect up to where I think looks good and then dial it back just a little bit. Because what I've learned over time is that I tend to take things too far because I've been editing for a while, I'm looking at the, at the computer, and my eyes just sort of adjust to things even when they look unnatural. So if I dial it back just a little bit, I make sure that I'm not running the risk of just editing way too much in the moment. And then later on, you look at it and say, oh, that was, what was I thinking, right? We've all had those kind of edits before. And if you haven't, it will happen one day when your eyes are opened to your past self and you say, what was I doing? So what I'm doing here is just painting on her hair here, lowering the black specifically in this area. I'm going to turn on my auto mask and see if Lightroom is going to be nice and allow me to auto mask her hair here. So what AutoMask does is it looks at the point of the image 
that I'm selecting with this little cross in my adjustment brush. And it's going to sample that point and look for similar areas of brightness and lines of contrast to hopefully detect what I want to mask and what I do not. So we'll just keep going here, following the lines of the hair. This might be more of a Photoshop than a Lightroom job, but for the sake of our tutorial, and because I don't really like Photoshop, we're going to just persevere. And this effect is reasonably subtle, so I think it's going to be okay even if my mask isn't completely perfect. So let's press O to see what I'm doing. Great, so you can see that, no, it did not do a very good job of auto-masking this area. I can erase a little bit off her face, a little bit more over here. I don't even know what happened there. That's okay. If it doesn't actually show up in the photo and it doesn't look like I missed an area, then we're okay. Okay, so let's zoom back out here. Fit. Here's our before and here's our after. Now this is not an example of necessarily what I think is the perfect edit. It's just showing you exactly how to grab the contrast in your image, how to smooth things out, and how to make your image pop, especially when the dehaze tool or the contrast tool by itself isn't working the way that you expect it to. From this point on, I would edit it just like I would any other portrait. It's just that it took some extra work to get it to this kind of starting point, if you will. Now I would go through and I would enhance her hair a little bit. I would add some extra details. Maybe I would touch up her skin here. I've got some brush templates pre-saved that come with our preset packs for exactly this kind of thing. So I could grab my skin soften brush and just paint here on her skin to even things out. We could also go into our HSL panel and maybe change the tone of the skin just a little bit. So things are slightly too pink and red, I think. So let's try grabbing our hue. And our oranges is normally where skin tones lie, so there's bringing it towards magenta. There's bringing it back towards kind of green. So we'll grab it just a little bit, kind of like that. Maybe try the same with our reds, see what happens. So here's before and after. Obviously, you can see very, very subtle change. Maybe I could take it a little bit further before, after. So just a very small change in the color of the skin. Maybe lower our exposure just a little bit. Ah, that's looking pretty good. Lastly, maybe I'll grab some color and add some color to this dress. So a couple of ways to do that. The first thing that I would normally try is to go to my HSL panel and just select this little marker doohickey tool thing. Hover over the area that I want to edit and you'll see that it's highlighting different sections of this panel to show me what color it's actually saying this is from. So it's saying that it's from the oranges. So I can't really edit it from the HSL panel because if I try and edit the blue of this dress, it's actually going to edit her skin in the process. So that's not going to work. I'm going to have to kind of isolate it with this brush and then go from there. So we're going to turn on my auto mask, press O so I can see what is actually being brushed here. And you'll see that sometimes auto mask does a terrible job of auto masking. So let's just undo that. And we'll try a mostly not auto mask. So I'll just do a very rough job here. If you're wondering why my overlay is green instead of red, you can actually change the color of your mask color. You just press Shift and O, and that will cycle between different options for colors of your mask. I find green typically pops out the best on my images, but sometimes you could switch to red or even black or white if that's better for you. So moving on, let's just clean up our mask here. We're using the auto mask function of the erase brush. So I'm holding alt on my keyboard to toggle to the eraser. And then I've just checked auto mask. So it's going to do its best to locate lines of contrast as I'm erasing here. And it's doing a decent job. So sometimes the auto mask brush doesn't do a good job, but the auto mask eraser does perfect when you're trying to refine your mask. So who knows? I'm pressing O again so I can now see my effect. I'm going to just reset this. Add a little bit of saturation to this dress. Hello. And then another way to add blue to something, if you're finding it just doesn't have enough saturation, it might be because of your white balance. So I could take the temperature of this white balance down. You can see that we've added a ridiculous amount of supernatural looking blue. Just kidding. Uh, but if we take it just a little bit down, we'll add some blue to that dress while at the same time not making it super, super obvious. Something like that. And you can see the areas of my mask that didn't get hit because they do not look natural. So we'd spend a little bit more time just blending things. Zoom in here and try and get her strap. 
Good. And again, if you're finding that your effect just is not blending properly, it's either because your mask is not dialed in well enough. So you can see if I zoom in here, it's very, very sloppy. Or because your effect is just too intense for the accuracy of your mask or just to look natural. So I'm going to erase this just really quickly, refine our mask here. And then I'm going to kind of meet things in the middle by pulling that effect back a little bit so it's not so obvious and it doesn't show off the fact that my mask wasn't perfect. So fit, let me show you before and after. It's a pretty obvious change, but in the moment, once you've seen that effect, it actually doesn't stand out too, too much. It looks like her dress was always that color. So there we go. We've added some serious pop to the image. We've added some color to her dress. We've evened out the contrast. And I've shown you some different stages you can go through in editing your photos. The first thing that I always do when I target a photo that is just not editing properly, the preset isn't looking the way that it should, is I'm going to go through and I'm going to say, okay, what are the fundamentals of this photo that need to be corrected first? Then I'm going to worry about the effects and the styling of the image. So primarily that's going to be making sure my white balance is right. Because remember, if your white balance is off, it's going to look kind of abysmal no matter what you do. So for example, if we took all of the same changes and we did those to the image, but we left the white balance as it was shot, you'll see that it never would have worked. Whereas when we actually go back to our previous custom value, that makes a massive, massive difference in our image. Next thing I go through is grab the exposure and the contrast and just dial those in. Kind of little by little, you want to go through and get things right, just finesse things to look natural. And make sure you're being aware of the contrast in your image and just looking to see how you can even things out. Oftentimes, it's really the result of you've got too much contrast in one area of your image and Lightroom isn't able to kind of apply selective contrast when you make those changes. It's going to apply it to everything. It's a universal change across the entire image. So you're going to want to correct that with either a radial filter or a graduated filter or even an adjustment brush. In fact, looking at it, this part of the image still has too much contrast, so I could grab another radial filter, drag it down in here. Perfect. Reset. Just grab our contrast, pull it back a little bit, maybe a little bit more white down here because it's too dark in this portion of the image. Step by step, little by little, you'll get your image finessed and then you can go through and edit it to your heart's content, apply the kind of filters that you like to get it in the style you like, and then you're good to go. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you. If it was, do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button. If you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. You have to hit the subscribe button twice, otherwise you won't be let know you won't be let know. You, <laughs> you won't hear from YouTube when I publish a new video unless you hit that bell icon. So make sure you do that. Lastly, leave a comment below if you have other tips or techniques to share. I would love to hear them when it comes to fixing photos like this. What is your number one thing to look for when you find a photo just isn't editing properly? I'll see you in the next video. Peace.